All right, I mentioned earlier that it might not be a good idea to bolt this into the wing yet. This is the forward strut attachment bracket, because if you do, this rivet will be covered up right here and you won't be able to get a riveter on here to get to that rivet. This slides into the wing like this. So obviously if this is here, you're not gonna be able to get to a rivet under here. It's easy enough to bolt this in after everything's riveted together or after the bottom's riveted, but not yet the top, because you'll need to get to this from the top to get to the bolts. But in order to get to this very first bolt hole in here, to get to the bolt that goes in there, we need to open up this part of the opening just a tad. And I think I have a picture on the screen that I can put up of the other wing, and you can see how much I opened that up. You can see I've drawn on the wing here this little arch, that's all I'm gonna grind away because with that taken away, I can now get a socket in here to get to that bolt. I don't know what this bit is called, but here's a picture of the bit that I am using to grind. Normally I would just fast forward through this because it's boring to watch, but I figured I'd just let it play at normal speed just so you can get an idea of how long it takes to grind out something like that. It doesn't take that long at all to do. All right, well, here's what it looks like now. So now with this little bit of opening here, I'm able to get a socket on here. So after I rivet all this together and the whole bottom of the wing is riveted, I will be able to slide this in, bolt this in. And then as you guys know, my wing right now is upside down, but what I'll be able to do when I flip it over is get under here and put those other bolts in the bracket. Anyway, just a little tip, just showing you what I'm doing to make it easier to be able to get to this rivet right here. On the bottom side of the wing, right behind the fuel tank, we have a nice big opening, and that is to give us access to the fuel lines. And we also have an access cover that goes on here that is meant to get riveted in place. But remember, when we're building an airplane, we always wanna think ahead. And one of the things I'm thinking about is, well, what happens next year when I want to inspect inside here? Or what if I ever get a leak or something like that and I need to get in here? It's not a huge deal, right? We can drill out these rivets, but who wants to drill out rivets on a painted wing? So instead of riveting this on, I will use screws to attach mine. That way I can just take the screws off and remove this anytime I want. Now, in order to screw this on, we need to have nut plates in these holes. I've already added one here, and I will show you how to add a nut plate. I have my nut plate that I'm going to use, and I have a screw that is matched to the nut plate. And just in order to drill the holes to mount the nut plate, we're gonna do it on top of the wing or outside the skin. So what I'll do is from the bottom here, I'm gonna put my screw up through the hole. I'll thread on my nut plate. And this will only thread on about a, a, you know, a thread or a thread and a half because it is a locking nut plate. So we get it lined up like that and now we're ready to drill the two holes for the rivets. What I'll do is I'll put my thumb on one end to hold it still while I drill one hole. Now once I have one hole drilled, in order to hold it in place, I will put in a silver Clico, and now I can drill the other hole. Now we're basically just gonna take it all apart. We have our two holes in here now that we can deburr, and then we're going to dimple them. The next step is to put in our flush rivets, so those holes have to be dimpled and this is the tool I'm using. This is a, I guess, I mean, a rivet squeezer, I guess is this, what this tool is called. And you can see these dies on here. Uh, it just, when you go up like this, 
Oops, I have to unscrew that a little bit more. These are adjustable, so you can adjust how far in and out this goes. But now, you can see when I close it up, this little pin in here goes up into the female part, and we'll get a nice dimple in the skin. So here we go. One's dimpled, there's two dimpled. This is what it looks like when the holes are dimpled. All right, you can see when I put one of these flush rivets in here, it just drops in the hole and it's perfectly flush. And the reason you want it flush is so that when you put your access cover on here, it sits flush against the wing. Now we also need to dimple the nut plate. You can dimple your own nut plates or you can buy these pre-dimpled. I've never had a problem dimpling my nut plates and they're a lot cheaper than buying the ones that already have the dimple in it. So there, I've done the same thing to this nut plate. What I will do now is, obviously we wanted it on the inside of the wing, so I'm gonna put it in position. I will Clico one hole, that holds the nut plate in position. Then I will put the rivet in the hole. And in the description box below, I'll, I'll put a, a part number for these rivets. If you wanna order some rivets, uh, you'll be able to order the right ones. And what you can see now is I've switched the dies in the dimpler. And again, I need to adjust this so that when I squeeze it, it's almost all the way closed. And it's, now these are just two flat pieces here. When I squeeze it, it'll squeeze that rivet and lock it in place. So I have one rivet in position. I'll put the squeezer in here. I'll squeeze that rivet. Take out my Clico, put in the other rivet, and we will squeeze that one. And there we go. We have a nut plate installed in the wing. Well, the next order of business is to remove all of the skins, deburr the holes, clean up the edges. Here you can see I'm using a die grinder to make it quick and easy. Uh, prime anything you want to prime, and then we can put the skins back on and get them ready to rivet. The two bottom skins are now installed with Clecos just randomly placed everywhere. The next step will be to prep the forward skins, kind of doing the exact same thing as I just did on the, the other two bottom skins. And then they can put in, be put in place and after that I think it's ready to rivet. These rivets here that you're looking at are for the wing skin stiffeners. And the fun part really is just putting in a bunch of rivets and getting to actually rivet something. There's so much prep work just to get to this stage that once you start pulling rivets, that's kind of really the reward at the end. Everything on the bottom is now riveted together, but I wanted to show you that there are some things that you cannot rivet right now. For example, this is the root end of the ring by the fuselage, and you don't want to put these rivets in or these rivets yet because later on there, was be, there will be a nose skin or a corner skin that goes around there that will share these same holes. And I even wrote on here a little reminder to myself when I was doing this, do not rivet. The other thing you'll notice is there are aft skins that go on here that kind of form like the, the trailing edge of the wing. 
And I don't have those on yet, so none of these holes are riveted because that skin will slip under the bottom skin um, when, they, when they get put back together. This is not riveted on yet. I have the forward jury strut attachment fitting riveted, but I don't have this one riveted yet because you can see these holes right here are all the same holes that that aft skin will go on, so I can't rivet these two holes yet. And I can't put this rivet in, or I can't rivet this piece on until this rivet is on, because if you do, you can't get a rivet gun in there to squeeze them. So since I can't really put all the rivets in here, I don't have any of them riveted yet. The other thing is I do not have these rivets yet. And I'll tell you why in just a second. I don't have any of these rivets in. And then on, you can see them on the trailing edge part of the wing. I don't have these rivets in or any of these rivets in. And the reason why, again, is because that trailing edge wing skin will go under here. And where this rear strut attach bracket is located, this skin has to be pulled up like this to get the trailing edge skin on there. So I left enough rivets out to be able to lift this skin up to slip the trailing edge skin in here. So that's all the way down. These ones down here I probably could have riveted, but I don't care. I can do them later when I do the trailing edge skin. The other thing I just wanted to show you is our little access cover for the fuel hoses. I have nut plates in all the holes and I put a screw in here just to show you. And then I have these little nylon washers here because anytime I put screws into a painted surface, I always like to put the nylon screws in there because that just helps protect the paint. So eventually when this is painted, this will all be the screws with the nylon washers. So this wing as it is now is ready to flip over and start working on the top skins. And then after, I guess before I rivet the top skins, I do need to start thinking about how I'm gonna route all the wiring for the nav lights, the pedo static lines for the pedo tube. And since this is a super duty and we will have uh, leading edge slats, I'm going to have lights in those slats. So I need to run wires for those. So anyway, lots of stuff coming up to do, but right now this wing is riveted together on the bottom and ready to flip over and start working on the top. And magically, the wing is now flipped over. It is sitting right side up and it is ready to fit the wing skins, the top wing skins. I can get some help again if Brian has a free minute and we can use a piece of two by four and bend these up over and get those clicoed in place. And I can start looking at this and deciding how I want to run the wires through the wing. And since this is the left wing, I also need to start looking at mounting the pedo tube and running the pedo and static lines from the pedo tube, which will be somewhere up around here, all the way up to the root. The way I'm building these wings, I built this right wing first. I got the, uh, the frame all built up, the bottom wing sk skins riveted on. And then I moved over to the left wing and got this wing caught up to the right wing. And now what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to finish all the skins on this wing and the wiring and all that kind of stuff. And then I, I won't film that, but then when this wing is done, then I will actually get this wing caught up to the other wing and then I'll film this wing. That way I can do this wing without filming it. It'll go a heck of a lot faster and any lessons that I learn or tips that I can come up with along the way, I will be able to pass on to you during that wing. All right, everybody, so that will wrap up this video. Thank you very much for watching. If you don't mind, hit that thumbs up button. It does do something to the YouTube algorithm, which helps the channel to grow, which I kind of need to do so I can earn money so that I can actually finish this airplane. <laughs> See you in the next video.